Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to look at a classic problem that is assigned in pretty much every theory class, which is this. We have a regular language here, and we're going to define L to the R as basically the reverse language. And what does this mean? It means that we're going to take every string in the language right here. So W is a string in the language, and we're going to flip it around. So as an example, suppose that L was, let's just say, oh, I don't know, 1, 0, um, 1, 0, 1, 1 then L to the R would be, well, we just flip this string around, which is 0, 1. And if we flip this string around, it would be 1, 1, 0, 1. So the 1 would move to the third pl place instead of the second place. Okay. So, and in general, if W is the string W1 through WN, where each of these is a character, then W to the R is just the flipping the characters around. So the last one is first, and the first one is last, and so on and so forth in between. Okay, so sh the question is show if L is regular, so is this language. So another way of saying this is that regular languages are, oops, regular languages are closed under reversal. So if you reverse a language, it will remain regular if the original was regular. Okay, so and I want to show where a potential method for solving this would fall flat. So here is one method of attack that turns out to not work. So I'm putting this in quotation marks to denote that it's not actually right. Well, if we know that L is regular, there's clearly a DFA for it. So let's let D be a DFA for L. Then if we want to, if we recognize or accept a string w right here, and we want to accept the string that's the reverse one, well, if you think about what a DFA does, you start in the start state, and you just follow the set of transitions until you reach the final state. Well, if you just flip the all of the transitions around, if, if the transition was going this way, now we have it going the other way, then we're just going to be following the transitions in the backwards order. And so if we've looked at, at the states in the reverse order, then we're going to recognize that string. So let's let a D prime be a DFA um, by flipping the, the transitions of D. And a lot of students would just say, okay, yep, that's good because that totally makes sense to just read the transitions the wrong, the opposite way, and then therefore you will accept the, the string in reverse order. Great. Here's the problem. It turns out we need to actually look at this in practice. So let's look at a potential DFA right here. So I'm just going to make one like this, and this is a pretty famous one. Uh, let's see, did I, have, no, I didn't do that right. One, zero, zero, uh, one, and then this one is the opposite. So I, I'm, this is a pretty famous DFA, which corresponds to, um, if it, it must start and end with the same character. So this one would be a zero, this one would loop on zero and come back on one. Okay, so... I'm just going to do exactly what the the proof, quote unquote, actually says to do. I'm just going to paste this right here, and I'm going to change it to red, let's say. Oops. Yep. So I'm going to change it to red. Now I'm going to change the order of the trans, the direction of the transitions. So that one's going to go backwards. This one's going to come here. The, the self loops are not going to change here because they both start and end at the same place. But the other transitions are going to change now. So this one's going to come here, that one's going to go there. And let's see, so then now let's, let's fix these two transitions. So the one goes out, the zero comes back, and the self loop over here is good. Okay, great. So now here's the problem. 
the, the start state is now messed up because, well, now originally every transition went out, now every transition is coming in, so the only string that this whole DFA or whatever accepts is the empty string because I, there's no self loop here and there's no transitions out. So it clearly is not the reverse of all strings that start and end with the same character. So we need to actually amend this further. And of, and of course, well, you can just say, well, okay, well, you can start in one of the final states from before, because if you ended in a final state before, you need to start, if you ended in a final state, you should be able to start in a final state now if we want to do the reverse, but which one? So we have three different choices here. Now here's where the non-deterministic NFAs come into play. So I could start in any one of the final states, but now we just allow the NFA to choose which one to start in. So here is an actual proof. So this is a, let's get rid of this. This is a real proof. So the idea is good. So to, we're gonna let D be a DFA for L, just like before. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let N be an NFA uh, as follows. So here, what it's going to do is the transitions are reversed uh, from D just like before, no difference there. But now we're going to make a brand new start state and I'm going to call it S that has an epsilon transition from S to all uh, previously final st uh, states. And we're going to do an actual example here. So the idea is, is good in that if a string ends up in a final state before, we want to be able to start at that place when we want to do the reverse, uh, read the string in reverse order. So we're going to go from this new start state and it has epsilon transitions to all previously final states. And why do I say previously final? Now I'm going to say that the, the old start state of D is the only final state in uh, this NFA that we're making. And why do we want to do that? Well, think about what the original machine did. It started in the start state and did some stuff and, and hopefully ended in a final state. Well, now if we want to do this in reverse order, what we want to do is we want to start in a final state and end in a start state. Okay, so that's essentially what we're going to do. So let's actually take this example right here and I'm going to copy it down. Actually, I can just take the other one because I've already reversed all the transitions of this guy. So copy, I'm going to paste it down here. I think I deleted a transition, so I'm going to put it back. So now I'm going to, in purple, do the, the changes here. I'm going to make a start state S right here. And I'm going to have it epsilon transition to all of these states, all of the fu previously final states, because we can start in any one of those. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make this uh, state no longer final and these two no longer final. And now this state, the previously uh, previous start state is now the only final state. So normally I would get rid of it because it was a final state before, but since it was the start state, it's the only final state now. And let's actually make sure that this is right. Well, we accepted the empty string before, and we should accept the empty string now because the empty string reversed is just itself. Well, we do because we can go down here. Now think about a string that it starts and ends with a zero. And it's the same thing if it starts and ends with a one. So let's just say it starts and ends with a zero. Well, then that means that 
If we look at the reverse string, it's exactly the same. It starts and ends with a zero. Well, that means that we come down here, go to this state, and in order to accept the string of length one, we can just immediately come down here and see the zero. But if it's of length at least two, then that means we will take this transition or this one, and that means it starts with a zero, and in order to get to the final state, it must also end with a zero. <laughs> so that's actually pretty cool that we can actually verify that this is the case. So the takeaway here is that the proof idea that it seems totally reasonable uh, kind of falls flat because of some minor details. So pro tip, if you want to actually test whether a theorem is true, actually use it on a real example like here because we immediately saw that there were things that we we left out. So we had to modify the proof in order to get the whole idea to actually work. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if there are, if you found another way to prove this. There are, there are actually many other ways you could have proven this, but this is just one way for what we know now. So I hope that was interesting. Please like and subscribe to the channel. As always, um, there are many other ways that you can support the channel, such as our Patreon um, link down below. There are many nice perks that you get, including Discord server uh, perks, as, and there are many other ways that you can support the channel as well. So I hope that was interesting, and I'll see you next time.